My earliest memories are of being in hospital. Most of the other kids were really sick, even terminally ill. Ironically, there was nothing wrong with me. I was healthy and I wasn't going to be terribly sick or die. I just grew up with things like medical examinations, surgeries, lots of observations. Often I would see my mother crying before medical appointments. I knew when I was five that I couldn't have kids because I overheard mum and dad. I remember mum being very upset with it so I pretended I didn't know anything. I was raised Catholic and went to an all-girls school with my twin sister. At school I remember at things like camps and swimming glasses that I'd have to hide who I was. I wouldn't get changed in front of the other girls. As long as I remember there was always this sense that there were boys, there were girls and then there was me. I ended up meeting a guy when I was 18. I decided to tell him everything. I even gave him all of my medical records. Can you believe that? It was like some sort of due diligence. I told him, if you want to go out with me, this is what you're getting. If you're still interested, get back to me in a week. And he did. I remember coming out as a lesbian when I was 26. I did the female straight person and that didn't work. Then I did the female lesbian person and that didn't exactly work. I took hormones, I tried to be male, gay, and Tony, but no, none of it was really me. I came out as intersex on 60 Minutes to everyone all at once, which was pretty full on. Surprise, I'm intersex. But it was so well received. That helped so much, finally being open and honest. I've always been interested in politics because that's where you can make the most difference to be the change you want to be in the world. As a teenager, all the girls at school had pictures of Duran Duran in their lockers. I had the Dalai Lama, JFK and Martin Luther King. I was pleased when I was elected Mayor of the City of Hobson's Bay in Melbourne. The council's gallery was full of gay and lesbian people, Maltese people, Catholic people and Muslim people. Talk about diversity and worlds colliding. I've been really lucky in relationships, but I did do a lot of sabotaging. Does this person take me as female or male? What do they expect? I'd often think, this is just going to be too difficult to explain, so I'd end up just going home. Now I've met someone who is okay with me being me. They accept me for me and my past. It's difficult. I can't imagine anyone with the capacity to accept someone with such a diversity of sex, sexuality and gender. We're engaged and we're getting married soon in New Zealand. In many ways, I'm very lucky. How many people have had the opportunity to not only go into a male-only area in a mosque as a man, but also as a lesbian into a lesbian community event? I have a sick sense of humour. I've got a really good family and I've always had good people in my life. And I've always been outgoing. I don't pretend to have all of the answers, but ultimately, I'm a person. I am part Antoinette and I'm part Tony, but I'm more than that. Recently, a local couple that I know contacted me. They said, we never really understood you being intersex and androgen intensity syndrome, but we never really had an issue about it either. But we've just recently had a baby and she has AIS. And the doctors were shocked that we already knew what it was. The couple said to me, thanks to you, we know that our child is going to be okay, that she's healthy, that she doesn't need surgery and that she's going to have a productive, happy, healthy life. Lots of people ask, why do we need to have an I in the GLBTI community? And I say, our community was just screaming to have a vowel.